Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Welcome to today's special online talk and conversation uh, with pioneering textile designer Sudo Beiko. My name is Simon Wright, and I am the Director of Programming at uh, Japan House London. For all of you who are joining us, uh, a few uh, housekeeping uh, notes for you. Uh, please note that your microphone and webcam will be disabled for the entire duration of the event. Um, please use the question and answer feature to type any questions you may have for our presenters at any time throughout the event. Uh, if you do not want your name to be attached, please check the option send anonymously. Uh, all the questions will be collated uh, by Japan House moderators and the selection will be answered live at the end of the session uh, where we will set aside a time, especially for, for your questions. Uh, we hope to get through as many questions as possible, of course, during that time. Please note that the contents of this event will be streamed live on Facebook, YouTube and LinkedIn, where a recording will be archived later. So I am in London, at Japan House London, and shortly I will be handing you over to our main speaker, Sudo Reiko, who is joining uh, from Tokyo. Following her talk, uh, Sudo-san will be joined in conversation by Anne Ma, a program director for jewellery, textiles and materials at Central St. Martins, uh, the University of the Arts London. And at the end, as I mentioned uh, briefly before, we will be able to answer some of the questions submitted through the question and answer function by our viewers. So our speaker, Sudo Reiko, is the focus of Japan House London's new exhibition, Making Nuno, Japanese Textile Innovation from Sudo Reiko, which is due to open uh, in the gallery at Japan House London from the 17th of May. 2021 this year. Uh, bookings, uh, I believe, um, are available. So please do if you feel like you would like to visit in person. So without further ado, let me introduce uh, our, our main speaker today. Sudo Reiko is the design director of Nuno Corporation, where she combines the Japanese craft traditions of dyeing and weaving with cutting edge technology to create a wide range of innovative textiles. She is renowned for pushing the boundaries of textile production and championing new methods of sustainable manufacturing. Hello, Sudo-san, thank you for joining us. Thank you. She is a member of the Japan Design Committee and she joined Muji's advisory board in 2016. Sudo-san is frequently invited to give lectures and hold exhibitions around the world, including the major Koi Nobori Now textile installation at the National Arts Center Tokyo in 2018, which I suppose is the start of this story uh, with Japan House in a way. And Sudo-san also was uh, the, the subject of Sudo Reiko making Nuno textiles at the Center for Heritage Arts and Textile in Hong Kong, known as CHAT at the end of 2019. And this exhibition is in fact uh, expanding on that successful show that was held in Hong Kong at CHAT and now can be seen from next month at Japan House London. Sudo-san, thank you so much for joining us. It's an absolute privilege to have you with us. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much for uh, inviting me and uh, also um, thank you for this event. Oh, it's so our hello, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Kon you. Konbawa from Tokyo. <laughs> <laughs> Konnichiwa from London. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I'll hand over to you. I believe you have a, a presentation for us, first of all. Oh, and yes. Then, and, then we will, and then we will ask um, uh, Anne to, to join us a bit later. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, I'm Deiko Sudo. Uh, speaking from Nuno in Tokyo. First of all, I'd like to thank Japan House uh, Director General, um, Michael, Director of Pro Programming Simon, and all the people um, there who helped put together this exhibition. Since the year 2000, Nuno has held the exhibition almost every year but never before have I experienced doing everything long distance, 
The final touch were made just last Friday, and we here in Tokyo conferred by Zoom with curator Mizuki Takahashi-san from the Hong Kong Center for Heritage Art and Textile, as well as Simon and all the Japan House members for two and a half hours. We checked every detail of the show from the ground floor to the lower ground floor gallery. Everyone applauded in the end We've done the impossible. It was a little over a year ago that I met Michael and Simon in London last, um, last February, and we've kept up online communication ever since. We've done a lot in one year. So now a little bit about us. Nuno is a small textile company founded in 1984 by textile runner Junichi Alai. I was one of the founding members in 1987 when Alai-san stepped down, I became the design director. At present, Nuno has nine members, including myself, who shared in every of the work from designing, production, to sale, and management, and accounting. Nuno works uh, together with some 50 different workshops in Japan, from small family-run operation to major textile manufacturers. Our production depends on the cooperation of many technicians and artisans including the ones in the exhibition. Among them, let me first introduce our work with the silk mill in Tsuruoka, way up north in Yamagata. At present, the only native Japanese natural material we use is silk, and Tsuruoka is one of only two silk mills left in Japan. In 2007, when I visited Tsuroka, I found piles of waste material they called kibiso. Essentially, the protective hard outer shell of the silk worm's cocoon, but too stiff to weave. So they ground it up for animal feed or making soap or noodles. For me, it was love at first sight. They said it was impossible to weave, but I know people who can weave metal. So I took some home to experiment with uh, initially. I failed miserably, but then together with retired staff from the mill, we began crafting homespun cloth. Hand knitted hats, even hand uh, plated sandals, if only we could turn it into finer strands. Maybe you can change the images. Thank you. So finally, through a try and error, through Oka Artisan succeeded in developing equipment to make kibiso yarn and all at once we made lots of new designs. In an antique shop in Tsuroka, next slide please. I came up on an old sample book of striped fabric, swatches probably assembled by a local samurai family we recreated a number of scarves and handbags based on those stripes using Nuno's favorite overspun yarn weaving. Kibiso is a very promising material, rich in sericin protein, which cuts UV rays repairs water, yet retains moisture. It's perfect for 
parasols and hats as long as supplies last. So next, let's look at where the overspun fine merino yarn from Tsuroka are woven on jacquard loom to make the textile color plate. Up until 40 years ago, this workshop wove kimono sashis and Buddhist monks robes. The looms for weaving kimono sashis were about 80 centimeter width, the perfect width for uh, scarves, which we've been making these ever since. And available in the Japan House Design Shop. Next slide, please. Some 2064 uh, wraps, wraps were woven into each sash, an industry standard in Kyoto Nishi's in weaving district. Adapting tools and techniques is a major driving force behind Nuno's new creations. Speaking of adapting things as a step to new designs, there is a jellyfish, which makes use of an industrial uh, straining fabric that shrinks with heat. It begins to shrink at 40 Celsius degree and reduce to 50% size by a 50 Celsius degree. This inspired me to try sewing it onto a thermal plastic textile and heating it to see what happens. Our Nuno members played with it and the result looks good. So we took the pro project to a friendly independent artisan, Nakanishi-san in Shiga, an expert in frock printing for applique and hand printing who often work with fashion designers. In collaboration with him, we developed a patented method of shrink print that we called jellyfish. Because that what it looks like, Nakanishi-san san even built a special oven for heating large uh, width of a fabric. Lately, our method has evolved to using biodegradable heat shrinking fabric and water soluble starch and behaved. In the gallery exhibition about Nakanishi-san's work is another evolving textile, the idea for the amate cloth. Came from the amate bag cloth made from cross-laid strips of ola fig bark, such as I found it in market in Mexico in 1989. Nakanishi-san uh, the effect using strong etizen washi paper glue print onto fabric. I always show design idea to other Nunu members and it's if three of them are blue, then we have samples made and discuss and experiment further until we arrive at the solution. In this case, we have um, affixed tatami-sized, very big sheets of washi paper, handmade paper, onto velvet made by second generation specialist weaver, weavers, Yamazaki Velvet. Lastly, here's our paper roll textile. Uh, yes, the design idea came from paper tubes, views endwise on the shelf. The technique involved here, known as chemical lace, was invented in Germany in 1884. At the time, machine embroidery was stitched onto a thin silk base that was then dissolved in an alkali solution, leaving only the embroidery as a lacy open 
work design. We began using the technique with various material, typically polyvinyl acrylide in the 1980s, but now we use biodegradable polyvinyl alcohol, another German invention that decompose to water and the carbon dioxide. This last image, the next one, yes. This last image is of a chemical lace surgical implant replacement joint displayed at the Cooper Hewitt Museum in New York in 2005, a beautiful design. The work of the textile designer, we are told. The textile surrounded us in our daily lives, yet they are often too close to notice. We don't know how they were made or what techniques the artisan used. This exhibition is an attempt to give people an inside look at the processes involved in creating textiles. I trust you will find it informative and hopefully entertaining as well. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sudo-san. Thank what, you. What a wonderful, wonderful presentation and a super accompaniment to the exhibition uh, at Japan House London in a way that I think I recommend everybody who comes to the exhibition when they can to be able to see this presentation as well beforehand. We are very much fascinated by materials and process at Japan House London and this exhibition and your presentation here certainly show that. Thank you. What beautiful, beautiful images. Um, I'll try and ask you some questions maybe later about that. But first of all, we um, now have the great pleasure of, of introducing uh, Anne Ma, who, who will lead a discussion with you about the work you've been doing. Hello, Anne, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Hello, um, Sudo-san and hello, Sai. Uh, hi, hello. <laughs> <laughs> it's really nice to see you. It's oh, so nice you. to see you and thank you for the invitation. I'm very much honored to be here. And um, yeah, thank you for the fascinating talk, um, Sudo-san. Thank um, you. I, I'll just introduce who you are, Anne, if I may, to to to, to everybody who who is watching. Um, Anne is a program director for jewelry, textiles, and materials, and a designer researcher at the Textile Future Research Community at Central Saint Martins, the University of the Arts, London. Within the industry, uh, Anne has worked for international clients such as IKEA, and I've picked out some Japanese ones here, Sony and Toyota. And her work has been featured in uh, View on Textiles, El Decoration, and Luomo Vogue, and others. Her design research is based around the socio-cultural context of textiles, particularly the connection between materials and society. And I see that that's a great fit for the work that <laughs> Sudo San does and the exhibition we have at Japan House. Let me hand over to you, Anne. Um, I know that you've got uh, some comments and, and maybe some questions. Also, from now on, Beth and Jones will be joining us uh, to interpret as well, uh, should we encounter uh, any need to do so. Thank you so much, indeed. Thank you, Anne. Thank you, Simon. Um, and again, a big thank you to the Japan House for inviting me for this conversation. And I think your point about com um, communities and materials and the way how we produce textiles is very much of my interest. And I think it fits perfectly with the way how um, Sudosan is um, designing her textiles. So thank you so much, um, Sudosan, for this super inspiring presentation. And for, oh, me, thank the, you. for me, the following stood out as, as truly connected to how you at Nunu approach textile innovation. So the reinvention of tradition in Japanese textiles by bridging the past and the future and the element of time, using time in production in your work, something that we call future crafts at St. Rosa Martins. Also the power of co-creation and collaboration um, and the importance of thinking sustainable um, in the widest sense. 
but also the deep sense of poetic materiality and the haptic qualities that you create with each of your unique oh. textiles. <laughs> I've got so a couple, <laughs> couple of questions um, regarding to each of the textiles that you presented. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the first one is about Kibisu, which is Kibisu, yes. one of my favorites. <laughs> I think there is a slide coming to remind everybody how Kibisa looks like. Um, so I found this really fascinating uh, to hear about your research and development, the development phase and how you discovered you, you know, you're like almost like a, a explorer, um, silkworm cocoon waste uh, in the silk mill in Yamagata. I was wondering about the time frame uh, uh, and developing new textiles. It seems to me that you are a true researcher um, who's not bound to the frantic fashion collections and the seasons that are usually going um, with the production of textiles. So my first question is, how do you develop a new textile design? And how long does the process take from the initial idea to the finished product? <laughs> In the case of Kibiso, from the moment we gather up all those piles of waste material that are in the corners of the of the mill through to actually putting that onto the to the loom uh, took two years. Wow. Thank you. And I was wondering, oh, oh sorry. Oh, sorry. I was wondering, um, do these textiles stay in the Nunu collection forever? Or, I mean, usually when you go to a department store, things stop um, to be produced. How do you approach long liberty at Nunu? As a rule, uh, we continue making the same, the same uh, textiles for a long time. でもやっぱりね、売れないものって出てくるんですよね。それは残念ながら、あの、そう自分たちの思いとは裏腹に売れないものってあるので、そういう時はかなり落ち落ち込みますけど、あの、そういう時は制作をやめます。But there are some uh, some textiles that don't sell. Um, surprise us by by not selling and when that happens we get very depressed and then we unfortunately have to stop making them. Thank you. Um, that's sad to hear, but I guess from seeing your shop, there is a lot that you keep. So I, I love to see all the fabrics in the shop. Uh, one more question was about the invention of your Kibisu yarn, which for me has a lot of potential. And I could imagine it could be useful for other companies because you are almost like an engineer who is developing a new material. Um, is it possible to, to share your in inventions with other companies? Or are you uh, mainly using it for um, Nunu fabrics? I think it's not problem. I think it's not a problem. I think it's a problem. I think it's a problem. I in theory, there's no problem uh, letting other companies use uh, Kibiso. The problem is that there, there are only two locations manufacturing it, and so there isn't enough to go around, really. really. But uh, once we'd invented this textile, then uh, Industrial designers and architects have already started using it for other purposes, like um, for uh, wall decoration, for example. That's fantastic. Um, moving on to the next textile, which is collar plate. Oh, um, yes, it was like uh, without your team, big help, we are not able to do the uh, execution. Thank you so much. That's, yeah, uh, um, Sudo-san is referring to the installation of the, there is a, you will see that in the, uh, in the exhibition as a surprise for everybody, which is beautiful, very poetic, and 
hopefully um, everything has been solved. So um, thank you to our technical team from Central St. Martins as well. I have, to, I have to reiterate that. Thank you so much, actually, to Central St. Martins team for, for, for helping us there. It's good. This, yes, it will be a surprise for those of you who visit the exhibition, actually. It's, it's quite extraordinary. Uh, <laughs> extremely well done and done so quickly as well. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Brilliant. And especially in these times, I, I would like to add as well. So talking about color plate, um, I'm just fascinated by the innovative way how you reinvent Japanese textile techniques and involve them into a contemporary fabric that, as you say, allows you to fly back um, in time and space. So you kind of in between different time zones and represents the collective cultural spirit of Japan. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about the meaning of the colors in your work? For example, um, I know that many um, dyed Japanese textiles are closely related to a season. Do you work with the original meaning of colors or do you have created your own contemporary color representation? In your work. Yes. Our way of thinking about color is actually very close to full color printing, where you have uh, cyan, magenta, yellow, black, and then the white of the paper. That's just those five colors. And those are the colors that we've used in the warp threads in uh, color plate. So, I actually had a, an interesting experience when I went to Mexico uh, in Oaxaca. I saw these colorful wool rugs uh, lined up in the street, uh, but these are actually only, uh, only use five colors. で、その5色の <笑> The five uh, colors they use are red from cochineal, of course, uh, indigo blue, yellow comes from a plant they called pelicon, um, the blue, uh, the, the black is acacia, and then the wool is naturally white. Uh, but using just these five colors, they could create thousands of different colors in these wool rugs, and, and that was what really inspired me. That's wonderful. And obviously, uh, textile weavers will know how to kind of merge uh, colors and blend them to create new shades with just using a couple of yarns, which That's brings right. me to another question in terms of dyeing. Do you have any specific Japanese dyeing techniques you use for those five colors? Mm. So actually, uh, at 黒、この3色だけでオープンしたんですけど、2年経った時に藍染めが色落ちすることが分かったんですね。When we started, we only used three colors. We used indigo, uh, we used uh, black and uh, the white of the, of the material. Um, but two years later, we realized that the indigo blue was fading. で、それから え、基本的には化学染料を使うようになりました。太陽光線とかそれから、え、あの、人工の光でもやはりあの、多分光のこう強さが違うんだと思うんですよね。で、痛みが早いので、え、天然染料を使うのをやめたんですね。
And since then, we've been using chemical dyes. I think it's to do with the strength of the light that both natural light and artificial light were causing the, the, the indigo to fade. Thank you. Yeah, there's, I think there is a big discussion about what is more sustainable, natural or um, chemical dyes. And I think it's not necessary that the natural dyes are always more sustainable, but I think we'll um, currently exploring that as Sandra Samartins as well and looking into the most sustainable process. あの、やっぱり色が映ったりか、あの、ケアをしなきゃいけない。だから、あの、私たちも今でもアイゾメの、あの、オーダーを受けたりします。で、その時はこういうことを気をつけてください。それから、あの、十分な、あの、参加するようにして
あの今かなり設備が整ってますね。Well, hydrophilic natural fibers require huge amounts of water to produce.、Um, but nowadays, most factories have a good setup whereby they can、uh, purify and reuse the water、uh, that they use. であのその時にやっぱり重要なのがやっぱり微生物バクテリアの働きですね。And bacteria, microorganisms are, are essential to this process. それと逆にその疎水性の原油由来のポリエステルとかナイロンはあの水を使いませんので非常に、えー、サステナブルではあるんですけど。On the other hand,、um... Petroleum based polyesters and nylon don't use water to make, so in that sense, they are more sustainable. ただ廃棄する際にすごくあの大量のエネルギーが必要なんですね。But、uh, they require a lot of energy to dispose of. で最近ではプラスチックによるあの海洋汚染の問題っていうのがあの一番頭を悩ましているわけですけど。One of the biggest problems、uh, that, that we're worried about、uh, right now is, is、uh, plastic pollution in the oceans. でもうとにかく原油由来の繊維に関しては、一人一人が必ずメーカーに戻して、でメーカーは責任を持ってあのケミカルリサイクルするっていう、その循環がすごく重要だと思います。And I think it's really important that we set up a cyclical system whereby individual, individual consumers can return their petroleum based、uh, fiber products to the manufacturers who then take responsibility for recycling them. That's an excellent point. I think something we、we'll、look into the connection between government.、Um, moving on to paper roll.、Um, I love the clever combination of the techniques in this design and how the playful pattern、um, and this materiality has been created. And I admire the ease in, in how you kind of move in between different techniques. You seem to be a master of all techna- textile techniques and materials.、Um, and you've been weaving、um, everything from metal to paper yarn in your work. So, how do you become an expert and specialist? Um, and all these kind of special areas、um, of new materiality and processes. And how much do you rely on collaboration with all these fantastic、um, Japanese craft workshops that you showed us in your presentation? Virtually all of our textiles are born from collaborative efforts with, with technicians and, and artisans. Sometimes we might not be able to find a craft person to do the, the, the work, in which case、uh, some of us Nuno members will, will, will undertake to do it by hand. しててていいくことがすごく大事でであそれ面白いねやってみようかっていうような気持ちにあのお互いがだからそれは一方通行ではなくてそれは面白くないからこうしたらみたいなこともありますしねそういうやり取りが一番楽しい時ですね。What's important is that we are able to explain what it is we are trying to, to produce, the idea that we have. And then we'll take along a handmade sample as well to show the artisans. And the conversation that happens is really important.、Um, we want them to want to be involved in producing this textile. It's not just a one way、uh, order. We want them to come up with ideas. And sometimes they say, why don't we do it this way?、Um, that's the most fun part of the process. I can imagine, and it involves a lot of trust between you and your partners as well. 
Um, and I think uh, moving on from that, I was, I was thinking there is this real appreciation for craftsmanship in Japan that I have mm. observed. And I'm slightly jealous about um, how um, craftsmen uh, and artisans are actually supported. Um, but I was wondering how much is this unique artisan heritage protected and, and how much is it sustainable in the future as a livelihood for people to, to make a living of it? Because we're obviously also looking in, in, into business and how people sustain their, their own workshops. And, mm. and we know how, how fragile that balance can be. So, this is one of the most important things that the people who are living in the world are living in the world. And the people who are living in the world are living in the world. One big thing that we have in Japan is the fact that the National Cultural Agency recognizes skills and their practitioners as living national tre treasures, and those skills are protected in that way. The それぞれ no 人間国宝に認定された方は必ず人間国宝に認定された時に一年間かけて日本中の例えばをこう八つに分けるんですねエリアを。で、8人 And when someone is designated a living national treasure, they have to spend one year going around eight regions of Japan and passing on all of their techniques to eight young craft people. で、それ so the government supports this program uh, and in that way there is support for the passing on of these traditional or traditions am i allowed to call them traditions for these uh, handicrafts to pass these on to the next generation that's fascinating and um, thank you I, I just i wanted to make a, a quick comment about ningen kokoho if i may of course i mean ningen kokoho being often translated as living national treasure but of course it's really a bearer of intangible cultural heritage mm. and it's the idea of this passing on exactly as sudo san says i mean i think one way of we, we've got into a little bit about the word tradition here i, I noticed from beth <laughs> as well and, and and also sudo san and, and the way we were looking at it but I attributed to Gustav Mahler is this wonderful phrase, which, 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 which says that tradition is not the preservation of the ashes, but the passing on of the flame. <laughs> and, and this way of, of, of actually it's, it's moving, it's living. It's, 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 so a living national treasure is not something which is necessarily preserving, but it's something which is also moving into the future. Forgive me, sorry, just a small interjection there. <laughs> no, thank you. And um, it, it's really closely connected to education, obviously, as well. But let's talk about the last fabric, um, jellyfish, um, which I love the kind of lightness and the unique textures of this design. I found it really poetic. And um, I like the fact that you have turned an industrial material into a floaty sea creature. Um, and I mean, maybe coming back to Simon's point about the kind of being alive of tradition being alive and, and, and constantly adapting, which is something that Nunu does. Um, I was wondering um, how you adapting and is there any process that you love to take forward um, in the future? What is your, what, how are you carrying the flame forward in terms of new designs? Because jellyfish was adapted. You made it biodegradable. Um, you changed some of the consistency of the materials. And, I just like to hear a little bit more about your future plans.
うん、あのー、今さ、えー、っと微生物の話が、あのー、出ましたけれどその水排水の汚れを全部きれいにしてくれるのは微生物が全部汚れを食べてくれて本当にあのー。それこそホタルがあの飛ぶぐらいのきれいな水になってるんですね、あの染め物工場の周りの川は。So I mentioned earlier bacteria and microorganisms. And these are what are responsible for cleaning the water that is used in the dying process.、Um, they, they treat the waste water by eating everything in it. And The water around、uh, dying factories and workshops is actually so clean as a result that you get fireflies. The And I think in the future, there will be more and more research into the use of microorganisms in textile production. あるエリア一番あの東北の一番北の、えー、繊維の産地って言われている山形なんですけれど、uh, Kibiso in Japan is produced、uh, right up in the north in the Tohoku region in Yamagata、uh, the, the birthplace of fibers they say でそこではシルクの、えー、製紙工場の隣に And right next to the silk factory, there is、uh, a factory where they have、uh, discovered how to use microorganisms to generate、uh, spider silk. The Watashi Dishin was Buzuri to Kagaku, a Mataku, a Karana in this Keredomo, Tabun, some of the Bisabuts no Kenki, a Hijon Juyo Dato. I'm not a chemist, I'm not a physicist, but I do feel like this research into microorganisms is very important. We actually、uh, developed back in 2000 a biodegradable plastic fabric using、um, some. Uh, funding that we got from Kyoto Prefecture. We used cornstarch. We used cornstarch. I have this fabric that we, this textile that was woven in, in Kyotango where they weave silk thread. で、実は、ちょうど今もう22年経ちました、20年か20、20年経過して、その生地を私たちビニールの袋の中でえどうなるか見てるんですけど、もう今、粉々になってます。We have that, fab- that textile in a plastic bag. Um, and we've been monitoring what happened to it, and, and now it's,、uh, it's falling apart, it's deteriorating just 20 years later. And so, I'm going to say that 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 I'm going to say that. And when I think about that, and I think about what I'm wearing today, this is a, a wool. T-shirt, a simple T-shirt from 30 years ago. あとこのスカーフあのカラープレートも実はもう、えー、できた頃25年前のスカーフなんですけど今でも普通に着てますよね。And this scarf, I've had this scarf for, for 25 years from when we came up with the idea for, for color plate. I'm still wearing these items. でもし成分解性素材あの2000年作った素材でシャツを作ってたらもう今ボロボロで何もない。But if we if I'd used that、uh, textile that we developed in 2000, that biodegradable fabric to make these items of clothing, they'd be falling apart by now. そんなことを考えました。<笑> That's just just what、uh, what I think、uh, when I when I look at the the biodegrading fabric. 
Thank you for that. Uh, I think lots of food for thought and I'll pass back over to Simon and the questions from the audience to <laughs> explore further. <laughs> and um, thank you so much, um, Sudasan. Um, as always, uh, an absolute pleasure to hear more about the background of your textile developments. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Anne, for, for, for all those probing questions uh, and your thoughts uh, around the, the five fabrics which are explored in the installations at uh, the exhibition at Japan House. Thank you so much. And, and thank you, Sudo-san, for taking the time to answer Anne's thank question. You. <laughs> well, we have lots of questions from everybody as well who's, who's, who's joined us. So if I may, uh, one part of this exhibition, of course, is about um, the sustainability of regional manufacturing, about the different regions you use, uh, the, the expertise of so many people around Japan. This question um, is uh, from one of our viewers. Thank you for a lovely presentation. It is wonderful to hear Sudo-san referring to the manufacturers by name. Please, may I ask how Sudo-san finds or chooses the manufacturers she collaborates <laughs> with? もうね、これはね、あの、一つの出会いが次の出会いっていう感じですね。最初本当にたった一人の、え、工場の社長さんと会って、それこそ新井さんが辞めた後自分はどうしたらいいんだろうと思った時に one has really led to another. Um, to begin with, I, I only knew one head of one silk factory. It was one, it was after the original uh, head of Nuno left, and, and I was in charge, and I I didn't know what to do, and I met this one head of one silk factory, and it just exploded from there. So it depends on who you meet, when you meet, and 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 how you meet them. I I I, I can see, especially with Kibiso, it seems also that the need for a collaboration needs to be strong in your partner as well. As it's there's a, there's a lot of factors there. Thank you, thank you for that. thank you for the question. Um, I have another question here. Many weavers inherit patterns. Is one of your motivators evolving old patterns and creating new ones at all as a legacy? So do you intend to evolve old patterns? Is this part of your intention? When you say patterns, what do you From mean? this question, I am guessing gara in Japanese, maybe. Gara. Maybe. Ah, uh, no gara o, furui gara o, tsukatte. So, this ne, furui gara o, tsukatte, ano, kono gara o, shinko suru, shisumori desu ka, to ka, arui wa, atarashi, atarashi gara o, tsukuru no wa. うん。あの、私パターンに関しては、えっと、この when it comes to patterns, I, of course, I 
always refer to old uh, patterns and textiles. Um, and if you look at some of the uh, dyed fabrics from the Edo period, you'll see really everyday things depicted in those patterns. Um, daikon radishes, umbrellas, cucumbers. And that's because people will have seen those things, enjoyed those things, liked those things as part of their everyday life and wanted to incorporate them into, their, into these designs. And so that makes me think, what is it that is part of my life now that I can incorporate into my designs because I am living now at this time? What is it that I enjoy that I can incorporate? So although I sometimes do replicate old patterns, it's not something I usually do. It's more a case of learning about the, uh, the actual the way of, of coming up with patterns. That's what I take from, from older designs. Thank you. I hope, I hope I've used the correct, the appropriate uh, uh, inflection of, 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 of pattern from, from the question that we've got written down there as, as in des design, as we're saying here. So I hope that's uh, answered your question there. Thank you very much for the question. Um, moving on to a couple of questions maybe about um, how traditions are, 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 are moving and evolving. Um, have you had to adapt the actual looms to accommodate new materials? あの、Yes, uh, we have had to update some of the uh, looms, the ones that you saw making scarves now that used to make obi kimono sashes. They had to be updated. The structure of the of the jacquard part of the loom and the way the uh, image, the way the way the pattern is mirrored. Okay, thank you. And as, as tradition evolves, um, we, we move into the, the future, of course. We've got a, um, we have got, for the final two maybe questions we've got a bit during this time, I know we have to, to finish very shortly. Um, this one, this is from Faye, Faye McNulty. From my understanding of Japanese textile production, the industry is struggling with, with traditions, traditions of, of, of textile production. Uh, and the average age of artisans is 60 years old. What do you think of the future of Japanese textiles? What does that look like? Mm. サンチで働き出してますね。だからそういうことが そういう人たちはどんどん増えてきてますね。期待してます。え。うん。そうです。だから自分手手織りだけじゃなくて、例えば you're right, there are fewer and fewer people um, involved, but 
the younger generation is starting to come back and starting to be more involved in textile production. So I think we can have hope for the future. I used to be a hand weaver myself, uh, but nowadays people are realizing that craft doesn't have to be made by hand, that they can use uh, industrial machinery to create these textiles and that they will have just as much value um, as the, the, the hand woven ones. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for that question. One last one, if I may. We have um, uh, one question. It's uh, what a wonderful presentation, Sudo san. Thank you so much. Thank you. What is your new project for the future? Hi. Uh, <laughs> ルックスを下げるっていうようなことのできるテキスタイルを作りたいと思ってるんです。だから外は例えば2000とか3000ルックスかもしれないけれども、その1枚の生地を通したら、例えば200とか300に落ちるぐらいな、そういうテキスタイ